name is Vincent Galliostro, and I'm 56 years old, and I'm currently living in Paris after living pretty much most of my adult life, which started at 13, in New York. <laughs> so uh, we're probably not going to go to why your adult life started at 13, no, are we? No, okay, good. We'll just guess. Yeah. All right, so Vincent, yeah. you're 56. Yes. So did, what happened when you turned... 50. Did you date? Was that a cataclysmic time for you? Or? No, it's interesting. Age has never been an issue with me. It was a marker for me. I turned 50, and coincidentally, a number of my friends had moved to Paris for, you know, their own various reasons. One had to get out of New York because he just, like, had had it, and he had like the chicest, most fabulous restaurant in New York for five years, you know, and decided, you know, I'm going to Paris, I can't deal with New York anymore. You know, all our favorite haunts were being closed by at the time, you know, prior to that, to, by the Giuliani administration, you know, and all of a sudden, the social life that I had was gone because of, poli you know, politics, me being of a very political bent. You know, What's your political bent? My political bent is uh, when I was 13, my first introduction to politics was, this is the only thing I'll say about when I was 13, was I went to hear Jane Fonda speak at Fairleigh Dickinson University in, in New Jersey and was hot <laughs> and became a uh, political activist. And you're a gay York. activist, correct? Yeah. All right. You know, and was, was one of the founding members of ACT UP New York, which was basically the organization that was created by four, about 40 gay men led by Larry Kramer in response to Reagan's no response at the time in the White House to, the, you know, to what was happening, and Mayor Koch at the time also, um, who probably together we, we blame the both of them for where we are today with the whole thing. But anyway, so that's my political event. Um, so I turned 50. And I had been going to Paris a lot, visiting my friends who had moved there and who had been there and stuff like that and, you know, working there and everything. And it actually, and I said to myself, well, I've never lived anywhere else other than New Jersey where I was born. So if I don't do that now, I want to, I want to experience living somewhere else. And Paris seemed like a logical, easy place to do it. So I moved there and, but, but kind of more seriously as I was working, you know, I was kind of not so much having, I wasn't, I wasn't having a midlife crisis, but I wanted to make films. And up to that point, I was working, you know, as a graphic designer. I was a painter and, you know, and somehow in between all of that, I had art directed two Prince music videos. There was a friend of mine who was directing them, hired me to do that, and started to get it, getting that bug. And it was one of those questions that I had to ask myself was when I was, at the time I was turning 50, I was so up to my eyes in like real work work, designing books and doing all sorts of stuff where I hadn't done my own, I hadn't done painting in a while, hadn't pursued, hadn't had a new exhibition in a while. And I just wondered if I could do it anymore. And However, my mind decided that I wasn't going to be able to answer that question in New York. It did. And that was really, it. I, I went to Paris to find out if I could do it anymore. Could you do it? You know, and since then I've had three wonderful installations, exhibitions in Paris. And as of a month ago, I wrote my first screenplay uh, on a subject that is, you know, I feel... It's like, not to sound, I don't know what it sounds like, but, you know, I don't think that we should make art or make films or write stories if we don't feel that they're necessary. Agreed. And I think it's necessary that the story that I'm telling in this film be told by me. So what's the big, so, so in this big change and in this mm -hmm. big, well, you know, what have you learned? What would you say to other people out there in terms, because you clearly, you went to Paris, you found you could do it. You could do something else. You mm -hmm. could live out a lifelong. Do you think if you looked back on your life and let's say you hadn't done it, you would have been maybe an 80-year-old guy with regrets and just, I mean, do you think that this changed the trajectory of who I, you I, are? I, I think that I would have been an 80-year-old guy that was sad. Hmm. You know, and I think that one of the most important signals that we have to kind of look for or listen to as we're maybe turning 50 which is, you know, it's a good marker, 
you know, is if we're still asking questions, you know, and if we're still thinking, then maybe there's something else or there's something more, you know, because if we stop asking questions, I, you know, I love, you know, leaving someone in a question, you know, it was, um, I mean, because a question is so powerful and a question is, leaves the possibility for something because you want to, if you're asking the question, you certainly want to find the answer so what's the question? or an answer. You know, and for me, you know, you know, the, you know, the, the question is what do I have, is it, do I have something that's worth asking somebody else to look at or to listen to or, you know, or to read, left to do, you know, and because quite frankly, to be really honest about it is that, you know, before the kind of moment came where I said to Richard, let's go to Paris, you know, I, you know, not to be too melodramatic, but I was really wondering if I stayed in New York, would I really, I mean, be alive? Because aside from, you know, a lot of, you know, social stuff that was ending, you know, I was, had a, I was working for a 70 hours a day, a 70 hours a week, you know, on um, work you know, and work that I didn't really want to do anymore. And um, at four in the morning, when you're sitting next to your computer with a bottle of vodka and a, little, a few other things. Um, that's the answer. And <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the answer to the question. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you know. so, so really what you're saying, I mean, it's very, and it's a really important thing, is you really have to go out there at a certain point and, and try and make, your dream come true. I mean, it's yeah. weird and almost like, you know, Wizard of Ozzy as that sounds, isn't it? I mean, you just... You know, a little bit. You kind of have to... It's more... The, wiz, the Wizard of Oz part is you have to be the wizard and Toto who pulls the curtain away. That's a huge, yeah. You know? You have to be the same... You're the same person. I like to say you're your own very godmother at stage. Yeah, yeah. In a way, and you know, an age is like, you know, I mean... You know, Fred, you know, so many friends of mine say, Vincent, you're so, you always have all these young people around you. You know, it's like you have this incredible rapport with young people. I said, nah, it's kind of like Peter Pan, you know, which is my favorite character in the whole world. And it's like, you know, someone once remarked to me, oh, when are you going to stop acting like a schoolgirl? And I just said, never. <laughs> well, I think you just keep asking questions. Yeah, because if you do that, then there's just more. Well, thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing all of your new stuff. Thanks. Okay.